Hello, I'm Linda Malacadelli. Today I'm hosting a special edition of Community Focus down at the Farmer's Market, where we're getting in the mood for the 28th annual Cruising Car Show. This year's event will be on a different route because of the construction in the downtown area. So I'm here with Richard Baer, the committee co-chair for the Cruising Car Show, as well as cars from committee members Tom Cox, Martyr Smith, Dale Burleson, and Larry Clark. Thanks for joining me today, Richard. Um, you've got some good information for us. We've got new days that the uh, Cruising Car Show's been on, going to be on. Um, what are those? Well, let me thank you first because we really appreciate this. We need some extra publicity this this year because actually everything is switched around. We usually run on a Friday and a Saturday for the cruise on a Friday and then a Saturday show. Mm -hmm. This year we're switching to Saturday for the cruise and Sunday for the show. Okay, okay. Now Saturday you've got the line and it's going to be down here at the farmer's market, is that correct? That's right, yes. Uh, Saturday we're going to be forming up about 3 o'clock. We hope Louie Loon will be down soon after that. Uh, the actual Cruise Parade this year starts at 5 o'clock, which is actually two, two hours earlier than we've done in the past, so we should have better light. And then everybody in the cruise is going to come right back down around the cruise route and come right back here to the farmer's market uh, for the uh, cruiser's ball, the dance that we have in the middle. Okay. Now the cruise um, route has actually changed. So can you tell us about that? Which way they're going so people know where to line up and watch this? Well, we only had to make a change in the first part of the route. Uh, we normally would come up Rod Street and go down Main, but this year we're going to come up McDonald and we're going to take Larkin, cross Jerome, and then actually back to Main Street on Hubbard Road and then come all the way around to Ashman and uh, come right back down here to the farmer's market for the show, or for the uh, dance. Okay, uh, where is the best route for viewing this uh, cruise? Well, this year the best place to go if you don't have a car and want to just watch the cruisers will be on McDonald first and then on Larkin Street until the cars cross uh, M20 or Jerome Street. Okay, um, now how many cars are you going, going to be expecting this year? Well, in the past, in the cruise, we've had between two and three hundred cars. I'm really hoping we have that many this year. That's a big event. <laughs> I didn't know there were that many. Wow, fabulous. And the car show then, uh, after that ends, what happens that night? What happens Saturday night? Well, we have the cruiser's ball, so what happens is the cruisers come back here to the farmer's market area. And uh, right in the middle of the farmer's market, we have the doo-wop DJs putting on a dance. Now this is, uh, they've been with us for quite a few years. They're backed by popular demand. Uh, they do a great job. They'll be doing some hula hoop contests. And quite honestly, I don't know exactly what they're going to do, but they always surprise us with something pretty cool. Well, it sounds fun for the whole family. I don't know if I could hula hoop still again. <laughs> I used to could, but I don't know about now. And now Louie Loon's going to be a part of it again this year, correct? Yes, uh, he'll be down here uh, Saturday at some point before the cruise starts. Uh, he's going to be the Grand Marshal, so he'll be riding in a, uh, a classic Buick convertible. And in the past, he's actually ridden for the entire cruise route. We'll see what he does this year. So, but he'll be down here, and so he's a lot of fun. Great. That sounds like a lot of fun. Now, what happens on Sunday? Is a totally different uh, thing than usual, or what are you doing on Sunday? Well, actually, uh, Sunday is pretty much like we've done in the past. Mm -hmm. In other words, we start at uh, 9 o'clock is when registration starts. I'll guarantee you we'll have cars down here much before that. Uh, we'll be using the parking lot areas around the farmer's market here to park the cars for the show instead of Main Street. Because Main Street is under construction, as probably over, almost everybody knows, and uh, we will be down here instead this year, so the entire show will be down here. And we have uh, music all day, and again, the doo-wop DJs will be doing all kinds of stuff, so they're a lot of fun. 
And there's something special for the kids, isn't there? Is the, uh, the northern trackless train going to be down there, I heard? The train will be down here, at least the, the uh, front portion of it, not the entire train. Mm -hmm. But kids will be able to climb on board and climb around on the train. And mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun. And we'd like to mention that Cruise and Car Show supports the local charity of Midland County Children's Special Health Care Services. For more information about the Cruise and Car Show, you can go to www.cruiseincarshow.net. You can call Richard at 631-5076, and you can also check out their Facebook page at Midland Cruise and Car Show. Let's take a look at some of these cars. And here we have Dale Burleson with his Cutlass Supreme. Dale, tell us about this car. Okay, this car was bought uh, new uh, by, by us in 1972, and uh, we've had it ever since. It was a daily driver for uh, many years, and uh, then we had it uh, restored, and it's what it is now. Uh, this is my baby. <laughs> it's a nice looking car. We used to cruise the drive-ins in this type of car. It works. <laughs> yes. And here we have Larry Clark and his Ford Falcon. Now, and you want to know about it. Yes. <laughs> this is an interesting car. It's a 1963 and a half Ford Falcon. It was uh, Ford's economy car in 1963 and two and one. Then Lee Iacocca, who worked for Ford at that time, was famous for saving Chrysler. He wanted to. He heard the felt the youth of the 60s wanted more than just blah cars. So he dropped a V8 in it a four-speed bucket seats, convertible top, and they sold like hotcakes. They couldn't come off the line fast enough. But a year later, in 64 and a half, the first Mustang came out and killed the car. Uh. So the Falcon pretty much was eliminated by 67, and the Mustang took over, and that's the story. But this is actually just before the Mustang came out, testing the market to see how the souped-up little muscle cars would do. And I bet it's a real chick magnet. I can't say that. <laughs> Here we have Marta Smith with her Mercedes convertible. Hi. I picked this up in uh, 1999, Washington, D.C. It's a 1984 Mercedes 380SL. And it has a hard top, which is in my garage. And it's so heavy, I never put it back on. So. Um, the dogs love to go in it, and we go in a lot of parades, and uh, it's just a fun, fun car. It's got eight cylinders, and it's really, for a tiny car, it's got a lot of power. Not that I use it, but it has a lot of power, and I just love it. It, it came just like this, and I've done virtually nothing to it. It's a nice-looking car. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm here with Richard Beer, and he's going to tell us about his hot rod. Yeah, uh, this is my 36 Ford uh, pickup. It's uh, completely redone. There's very little 36 Ford left in it, really. It has a 350 Chevy V8 and a Mustang II front end, and uh, the entire body is all redone, and it's all painted Viper red, and it's a lot of fun to drive. I want to ride in it. <laughs> Thank you. And last but not least, we have Tom Cox with his Dodge Magnum. Yes, uh, this car was made in uh, 05 and they quit making them in 08 and it's got a, a Hemi in it and it's uh, 340 and it also runs on four cylinders on the highway and then when you get on it it goes collects into eight so it's a very fast car and uh, my wife calls it the grocery getter and we have a lot of fun with it so it's a great car love it and uh, too bad they quit making them but. well thank you very much we're glad that you joined us for the September 2017 special edition of Community Focus, where you can hear about some useful and informative events and activities that we can all look forward to in Midland. And remember, if your club or organization would like to join us in the months to come, please find our application online at MCTV section of the city website or visit MCTV in person to submit an application. We'd love to have you as a part of Community Focus.